Hey guys, have you ever wondered what it's like living and working as a doctor in Manhattan? Well, stay tuned because in this video, I'm about to take you behind the scenes in an average day in my life in the outpatient setting. Hey guys, it's Shireen, AKA Halal Girl New York and welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe. And if you are not, thank you so much for coming back. Right now, I am in the heart of Manhattan in the one and only Times Square and I'm heading to my clinic. There's not many people around me right now, so I quickly slipped off my mask. I'll go back on now. Okay guys, sorry to interrupt present tense Shireen, but I'm going to take you back from the start of the day. So I start my day waking up at around 7.30am, which gives me only 20 minutes before I need to leave the house. I have time to wash my face, slap on some eyeliner, change into something semi-presentable since we don't wear scrubs in the outpatient setting, and then I quite literally run out of my apartment to catch the subway. The subway ride is roughly 20 minutes. I spend the journey either having some alone time and people watching, reflecting on life, etc. Excuse me, staring into your soul right now by the way listening to podcasts or trying to catch wi-fi in between stops to reply to instagram messages and comments the next stop is 34th street Carol square i exit the subway at the most famous stop in the whole world times square 42nd street and if it looks like i'm literally walking through a movie right now it's true it feels just like i'm in a movie i mean look at that dude who just casually skated past me and sometimes i quite literally walk through a camera crew who are filming a new movie or tv show but anyway back to present tense shireen i want to show you guys what it's like to be a doctor in the outpatient setting i know a lot of people who go to medical school think that most of their lives will be just in the hospital however primary care i.e being a gp is becoming a more and more prominent concept here in the u.s every six weeks we are in the outpatient setting and we see patients in our clinic this clinic is a government funded one which means that you do not have to have great insurance to come to this clinic it's for people who are on medicaid or medicare who can't afford to go to some of the private clinics obviously i'm running late i have two minutes to get somewhere that's going to take me three minutes so let's run Excuse all the noise, Manhattan is constantly under construction. There is a quote that I came across which said New York would be a beautiful city if they ever finished building it, which is so true because there's construction 24-7. I did wake up early enough to have breakfast today. I had golden ground and I watched about 20 minutes of an episode of Grey's Anatomy just to kind of get me in the zone of being an intern. Um, I'm about a minute away from the clinic now, so I'll put my phone away while they do our temperature check and I switch out my mask and then I will see you guys when I get into my clinic room. Alrighty, voice over Shireen is back for you guys. I got my temperature checked when I entered the clinic and I signed in as a provider. First thing we do is we go to this cloakroom area and pick out a nice clean white coat for us to use for the entire day. I struggle to find extra small so I usually end up drowning in a bigger size. We then go to this PPE cupboard and pick up some fresh masks and a face shield which we reuse and wipe down in between patients. Hashtag pandemic life. Here you see me walk into my clinic room Room, change into said white coat and start my day. I log into our electronic medical records and review any updates or messages about the patients who I'm scheduled to see today. Of course, I need to switch out of my fabric or surgical mask and put on my N95 mask before seeing any patients. RIP to my chubby cheeks that really struggle being squished behind this mask. So we just had a little huddle with our two attendings and the rest of our residents, which is where we kind of stand basically in a huddle. We go through any high risk patients that we have. We go through any reminders, like if there's been any changes in the clinic, for example, or if we need to refer a patient to physical therapy, how to go about doing that. If we need to get an EKG on the patient, which room we now send them to. Because obviously there's different changes when you are in an outpatient setting. Or for example, if a patient is actively suicidal, which number we can phone to give like a warm handoff and to refer to a psychiatrist or a therapist. The huddle serves to be a really good reminder for all the residents so we can ask any questions that we may have as well. After the huddle, I log back onto my schedule where I can check the location of my first patient. If they've arrived, their name turns green and I can enter their chart and start drafting up some notes so I can be super organized during our consultation. So it's 10 past 9. My first patient is scheduled for 9 a.m. They're just in the screening room where they get their vitals checked, they get weighed, um, blood pressure, things like that, um, so that we have a record of that by the time they come and see us. 
This is my clinic room for the day. Every time we have clinic, we get assigned our own clinic room. It feels very nice and fancy to have your own room. So outside there's a board where we have each doctor's name and which room they're gonna be in. So that way the nurses know which room to bring the patients to. So today I'm in this room, room 35. Each room has a bed so we can examine the patients, a curtain for their privacy. We've got everything we need in these cupboards like gowns, we have gloves, hand sanitizer, a sink, hand wash, weighing scale otoscope, an ophthalmoscope, a blood pressure machine. It's all the kind of things that you would expect in an outpatient clinic setting. First things first, when I get into the clinic room, I put on my white coat. I also switch from my surgical mask to my N95 mask. But I usually keep the surgical mask on 24-7 and then I switch to my N95 mask anytime I'm seeing patients. And then we have these face masks which have our name on them. So once I've logged into our electronic medical records, I review the patients who'll be here throughout the day. I usually actually review all my patients the night before my clinic, so I know what to expect when I arrive here at around 8.30 or 8.40. We have the huddle at 9 a.m. and then I go back and I do a further review of my patients. Sometimes we get some walk-in patients who just kind of turn up on the day and get assigned to us. So it's just good to review their charts, see if anyone is high risk, and to kind of mentally prepare ourselves as to why a patient is coming into the clinic today. So I've just finished reviewing my patients. Uh, my first patient is a little bit late. So it's now 9.20 and they've just arrived. They've had their blood pressure checked. They've had their vitals taken, which I can see on my side too. So it kind of gives me an idea if there's anything else I want to counsel a patient on. For example, if their BMI was very high, I'd make a mental note to counsel them on that and talk about nutrition and exercise and diet and things like that. The next four hours, I see a bunch of different patients who I obviously couldn't film for this video. So here are some beautiful stock videos while I talk you through some example cases. On this particular day, I counseled a patient who was having heavy periods associated with stomach cramps. I met a gentleman who was experiencing allergies, but also wanted to discuss his depression. Another lady had severe migraines and wanted some help with that. I saw a diarrhea case. An elderly lady with chronic knee pain who we did end up referring for some further imaging. I'm always sure to glove up and examine every patient after taking a thorough history. And then after each consultation, I basically excuse myself for around five to 10 minutes to present each case to my attending. And attending is always overseeing our plans, whether we're in first year, second year, or third year of residency. And we go over the assessment and plan of the patient with the attending, and they'll kind of let us know if they think we've missed something. And then what they do is they come back into the room with us, speak to the patient, and kind of go over the assessment and plan just to make sure that nothing is missed. Then the attending will leave, and we'll finish off the consultation with the patient. We'll give them a summary of what we're going to do or what we're not going to do, make sure that we explain everything to them and that they understand everything whether they have any follow-up appointments to go to, whether they need to go for blood draws or get some vaccinations, anything like that. A really important but not so glamorous part of medicine is documentation. So basically typing out thorough and up-to-date notes about everything I discuss with my patient. Sometimes I do this while speaking to the patient because they don't really mind if we need to check something up on the computer or make a few notes, but often it's after they've left because I prefer to give them my undivided attention. Future doctors who go on to see these patients after me will literally use my notes to see what care and investigations the patients have already received. So in-depth notes are so, so important. Important. Since it's actually a Tuesday today, we have what's called an academic half day in the afternoon where we have a whole afternoon dedicated to teaching. So I only had half a day of patients scheduled in the morning and let me take you now to the next half of my day. So I just finished, it's usually quite a relaxed pace. They schedule about four or five patients for us. I also love learning from my preceptors who are both primary care doctors who have been in the profession for far, far longer than we have so it's so great for learning from their experience and they give us so much advice and some tips that you just can't learn from a textbook so it's really invaluable time to get to precept with them because often outpatient is very different to how we would do things inpatient timings are different priorities are different so it is really valuable learning from them and i think it's awesome that we get to do that on tuesdays we have what's known as an academic half day so basically from 1 p.m until 5 p.m. We are teaching that is led by attendings and fellows who are experts in their field. So today is just for the interns and what the residents do is they cover the work of the interns on the Tuesday afternoons. So right now I'm heading to our academic half day. Because of COVID and social distancing, it does mean that not all the interns can come to the teaching in person. So most of them log in from Zoom and actually get to go home 
change to the pajamas and then it's interns who are on the clinic block like me who come to the teaching in person last week i got to watch it from home in my pajamas and this week i'm heading to some fancy offices to watch the teaching in person i am so hungry right now and i really shouldn't so if you guys know that tiktok trend where the girl is like girl don't do it oh i'm not gonna do it girl i'm just thinking about it and then like a second later she's like I did it. This trip to Dunkin Donuts is a classic example of that because I was really not supposed to get a donut, but here I am, unashamedly, on camera, going and getting some munchkins. Anyways, it's roughly a 15 to 20 minute walk from my outpatient clinic to the offices where we have our teaching with the rest of the interns. So again, I usually call a friend or catch up on my emails or Instagram messages during the walk, or I just walk around and smell the roses, quite literally sometimes, because, you know, here's some roses. It is academic half day right now. I am with my cohort cohort from my clinic block. We have Dr. Meister here. Can you say something profound for the camera? We're having severe technical difficulties and I'm going deaf. Oh, wait, so we were, we're not supposed to be watching a blue screen right now? No, we're not. This, oh, I this see. is not what we usually do on academic half days. By the way, you guys, look how much they stretched my face on this new ID card photo. I look like a literal potato. The theme for this week's lectures was the elderly population, so we recapped some things like dementia, cognitive assessments, and a few other conditions that affect elderly populations. We just had an exhilarating lecture on dementia. I'm with Dr. Nathani. Hey. How was Diwali? Oh, Diwali was great. So I just came to pick up our lunch. I got an avocado and toast. What did you get, Rohit? Oh, I got a a cob, turkey cob. <laughs> Expectations versus reality meme in the making. I was not expecting this. And I can smell the onion from 10 miles away. By the way, our residency program actually gives us credit to order our own lunch, which is such a nice perk, and we're super grateful for that. So even though there's no time for an actual lunch break, we're all really happy doctors now that our tummies are full. Anyway, here's live footage of me paying complete attention to the teaching and occasionally glancing over to you guys to make sure you're still watching this YouTube video. On that note, don't forget to subscribe. Hee hee. Time for the challenge. Um, I'm with my co-interns around here. We just had some geriatrics teaching. What did yes. you learn, Eric? Um, mini mental status exam. Yep. Um, asking all these weird questions. Yep. How far can you walk and then time them? Okay, great, uh, great learning than, point. Yeah, if it's more than 20 seconds. No, it's 12, it was it. If it's um, more than 12 seconds. Don't test me on camera. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna make me look bad. Can yeah. you tell the people? Uh -huh. um, where we're going now? Just gotta watch out here. Yeah. Yeah, um, now we have Sims Lab training from 4 to 5. The Sim Lab basically stands for Simulation Lab where they put a scenario on for us and basically it's a way we can learn stuff in a control setting yeah. so that when we actually are on the wards we actually learn from an attending what to do in that situation. We have Joseph here. How was teaching? What did you learn? Everything about the elderly. Everything about the elderly. Yeah. Whoa, in two hours you learn everything about the elderly. Yeah. Very impressive. He's one to watch. <laughs> Hey guys, so I just quickly stopped at the chapel so I could pray. I have five minutes between this session and before my sim lab session starts. Planning in advance helps me fit my prayers into the day, which is always really important. Now I'm heading up to the sim lab. The sim lab sessions are run by the Palm Crit attendings who are the senior ICU doctors. So obviously I was not about to film this session. The cases are also super confidential because our intern class is split into four or five different groups and we all rotate and do the simulation cases at different times of the year so i didn't want to ruin the case for anyone by putting it on youtube just came out of sim lab teaching it was about an hour long and what we do is we go over a case this time there were just um five of us interns normally we have some pgy3s and some pgy2s with us so we can more naturally assign roles because naturally in a real life setting the pgy3 would be the team leader and the pgy1s were usually on compressions or checking vitals, doing the exam or reading up on the chart, things like that. Um, but because there were five PGY1s this time, we allocated PGY3 and two roles to each other, which was kind of cool experience because we got to kind of see the case from a different viewpoint. It was definitely a really good learning experience. I'm finally heading home. Today feels really long because I was on night shift yesterday and today was my first day back on the day shift. 
so my brain is still trying to adjust sorry to cut you off again present tense shireen but hey you guys can see my commute back home it's so pretty and i love just stopping breathing in the fresh air albeit through my mask and just having a look at the towering buildings around me and just taking a moment to feel gratitude for the fact that i'm doing my residency in one of the most exciting cities in the whole wide world i have about a 20 minute commute but it's one straight line i can't really complain and when i'm not working i actually love being away from the hospital so i can't complain this was actually an active choice that my husband and i made uh, but on days like today where it's pretty freezing i would kind of love to just cross the street and be home on my walk to the station i usually scroll through my instagram uh, if any of you guys follow me on instagram which is halal Gulf new york you'll probably notice that a lot of my stories that i do are on my walk to and from the station i kind of find it to be useful time to kind of recap what i've done in my day answer some questions post all my stories um reply to some of my dms so i do that while i'm walking sometimes i give my family a call sometimes one of my best friends will reply to some of my friends voice notes so here's a few more shots from my commute back home it's actually pretty relaxing since i don't have to drive or pay too much attention i just sit on the subway car all the way home i'll be on this outpatient rotation for two more weeks before switching to my next rotation i hope you guys enjoyed seeing a regular day in the life of an intern in new york in the outpatient setting it is so so different to inpatient but it's honestly just as beneficial for learning about human health and disease if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up comment below i love reading them check out my other videos and subscribe to the channel you do not want to miss what i have coming up next and i can't wait to see you guys next time